Hey everyone, it's Felipe here. So as you know, I'm here to keep you up to date with current market news and teachings. So I'm going to go ahead and, and jump into the topic I'm going to be talking about today, which is basically on Tether, right? What is Tether? Tether is literally the central bank for the crypto market or crypto economy, whatever you want to call it. They literally um, mint and issue out tokens in exchange um, for loans they make, right? The collateral they take on those loans um, can be uh, basically Bitcoin, right? Some of the companies they lend out to that have been found to them having been lent to and those borrowers in, are basically have been cryptocurrency uh, companies uh, that lend that in exchange for the loan uh, give Bitcoin as collateral to Tether. Um, and then in exchange, Tether mints or creates tokens out of thin air and, and, and lends them out in exchange for that collateral. So let's kind of go into this stuff. Um, I find this article pretty interesting, basically examining a Tether secret loan portfolio because they're very, very secretive on in terms of who they lend uh, to, right, or who their borrowers are. Um, the only information that has come to light has literally been through bankruptcies of said companies that then um, it has come to light that those were actual borrowers of Tether. But from seeing some of this information, um, they're not that great of a lender because a lot of the companies they lend to have gone bankrupt, right? Um, so basically, uh, we validate this claim using data from the Celsius network bankruptcies. Uh, loan customers of Tether include several well-known crypto entities. And this has not been disclosed by Tether. This has just come um, into light through some of the uh, chapter uh, chapter 11 uh, filed bankruptcies from some of the corporations or companies that have borrowed from Tether. Uh, so basically, um, Tether... It's considered one of the stable coins. I wouldn't call it a stable coin um, because some of the uh, some of the loans they make um, and the collateral they take are very volatile uh, 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 instruments, right? So a stable coin should remain stable, pegged to whatever real world currency unit it represents on the blockchain. Uh, the second largest stable coin, USDC, is issued by the New York-based uh, company called Circle Financial. This would be Tether's competitor. According to the report, USDC is backed by short-term U.S. Treasury bonds and cash held in, in bank accounts. That's more of a stable coin if they're being honest, right? And if they're not lying, because a lot of these um, companies don't disclose a lot of information that SEC-regulated corporations would. For example, I looked into Tether's financials and I find interesting that their filings are typically 10 to 15 pages long. That's not a lot of information they're providing, right? Whereas usually, and I get it, they're not regulated, but as comparison, an SEC regulated company um, would have in their filings literally would be as long as, you know, hundreds and thousands of pages because they have to share and disclose a whole lot more of information. Um, but I mean, that's just how this works right now, right? Because uh, that's what it is. So basically, assume assuming that Tether's claims regarding their reserve portfolio is accurate. After all, Tether has been caught lying about their reserves in the past. Tether portfolio managers have decided more risky approach to their main competitor circle. Um, her previous attestations and document releases, Tether tokens have been backed by Chinese commercial paper, uh, Bitcoin, precious metal, other investments, and secured um, loans to non-affiliated uh, entities. Um, so the the obscurity basically comes from that, that area, right? Uh, other investments, there's no information on what those other investments are, and secured loans to who and for what? what is used as collateral for these so-called secure loans. I mean, what they show on the on their balance sheet or on their financials is Bitcoin. It's what's used as a collateral. Uh, so basically the, the information that has come to light onto who has been some of their borrowers have been in unfortunate events through things such as bankruptcies, right? So in this case, bumbling C Celsius Network CEO, Alex Mashinsky, 
let slip that Celsius had borrowed around one billion from uh, dollars uh, from Tether using Bitcoin as collateral. And he goes on to say, if you give them enough collateral, liquid collateral, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and so on, they will mint Tether against it. So they just create uh, literally Tether tokens out of thin air uh, by a, a random uh, generated program uh, a number, and, and that's where Tether comes from. Uh, so basically, there's minimal public information available about Tether's loan book. They're a bank. They lend out to borrowers. But there's not a lot of information who those borrowers are. Uh, so basically, um, identifying Tether's on-chain loan activity. Uh, basically, uh, the individual described the terms of the loans and provided a list of three blockchain addresses used by Tether to issue and redeem loan principles and to collect interest payments from their borrowers. Tether uses uh, their main treasury address on Tron and Ethereum to issue and redeem loan principles. A third address uh, we will refer to as Tether's interest address, uh, not annotated by any available blockchain analytic platform. Uh, we checked Etherscan, Arkham, and Nansen uh, was reported to receive interest payments on the loans. We observed that the Tether interest address received transfers from multiple addresses and that these transfers cluster around the first of each month. Once uh, the large uh, balance builds up, the funds are then transferred to a second address, uh, Bitfinex deposit, and then immediately uh, transferred again to Bitfinex exchange hot wallet. Uh, basically, on Bitfinex, it, uh, it, it's basically a deposit uh, refers to a transaction in which you transfer funds to your Bitfinex account from an external party, a wallet, a, an exchange, or a bank. So here, there's basically this uh, a, a depiction of how that works. A bunch of borrowers pay interest to an interest-collecting address. Once it, the large balance builds up, then Tether transfers it to a Bitfinex exchange hot wallet. So that's how that works. The information on some of their borrowers have come through again through Chapter 11 filings. Um, after the collapse of subsequent Chapter 11 filings, Celsius network with Tether, uh, Celsius network relationship with Tether was examined in some detail on their collapse. Celsius owed around 900 million to Tether. This was paid when uh, Tether reportedly liquidated Celsius Bitcoin um, as a collateral. So they claim because um, there's really no, no true information on that. We conclude with high uh, confidence that Celsius loan from Tether were disbursed and repaid via Tether Treasury address. Um, so here basically is just showing uh, the interest rates um, paid throughout that period of time. Uh, who else does Tether lend to? Among these were the crypto lenders, Babel Finance, Insolvent. Insolvent means bankrupt and Nexo and crypto trading firm, Three Arrows Capital, Insolvent, um, which they blew up with, with FTX last year, basically, and Amber Group. Uh, we also identified addresses associated with Bitfinex, OKEX, uh, BTC Turk, and Binance Cryptocurrency Exchanges. Um, as of December 1st, they appeared to uh, be seven borrowers making monthly interest payments based on the similar similarity of the payments amounts over the past months, the largest payments are transferred from the Bitfinex hot wallet. Note, this doesn't mean that Bitfinex or OKX are tether bother borrowers, only that someone used these exchanges to make transfers um, to the interest payments um, uh, addresses, right? And here it just basically goes into uh, showing some of those transfers um, that have occurred, right? Uh, while using the Bitfinex um, and OK. X, um, exchanges. Uh, so um, something that stood out to me and I find interesting is um, they kind of go into it here. Um, basically, uh, so basically, um, why did Tether report sec reported secure loans massively diverge from this data starting in May, June 2022, around the same time as Terra, Celsius Network, and Three Capital um, collapse? So at the time where some of their bigger bigger borrowers collapse or filed for bankruptcy, suddenly Tether's uh, loan portfolio um, exploded and and went and they made more secured loans. I find that interesting, right? So you can kind of see the divergence here, um, starting from here, the green column, 
which is the secured loans. And we see a massive divergence to the upside, meaning they made more loans during that period at a time where a lot of those companies that they were lending to went bankrupt. Um, that's a little sketchy to me. Um, so for example, um, uh, basically, Tether lent Celsius network just over 4 billion in total. Our data indicates that other parties like Amber and Three Arrows similarly received billions in loans, which round trip their way through the crypto economy without ever touching a real financial system or ever being backed by real money. Um, they list Bitcoin category as part of their reserves. Uh, so this is basically boom, that's their balance sheet right there. Um, or what assets they hold. It's literally one page, um, not much information on who they lend to or um, what some of these investments are, right? So they're very obscure in some of this information or they don't share a lot of this information. So it's a very obscure um, um, company, which I find kind of sketchy. So, I mean, in, a, in an aspect, um, the the secure or the more secure investments makes a lot of sense, such as cash and cash equivalents, U.S. Treasuries, overnight reserves, uh, term reserve purchase agreements, monkey, money monkey money market funds, uh, cash and bank deposits, non-U.S. Treasury bills, corporate bonds, precious metals, bitcoins, um, other investments, and secured loans. So they list uh, Bitcoin um, um, as part of the reserves. And then they list secured loans as part of the reserves. But a lot of their secured loans seem to be collateral um, on Bitcoin, right? So that, that kind of, um, there's not a lot of information into what is going on in there. And I find that super sketchy. Uh, so as, if, as part of the Bitcoin category comp comprises Bitcoin held on a chain on chain and wallets controlled by the group. It is in, it is possible that Tether is including these extra Bitcoins in their reserve, which may, basically would be they're pumping up their they're pumping up their numbers, making it look uh, much more attractive um, than it might be. So it's a lot of obscurity around that, um, which I find um, kind of sketchy. Uh, so what the hell is? these tokens and what the hell is all this stuff literally it's just a program um in this example i'm using the icp the internet computer which is just basically a bunch of containers or you can call them smart contracts that are used to make message transfer messages between one another and they basically work um in exchanging um transfers for tokens right via messages um, and here we basically have one smart contract or one container, which in the ICP is called an actor. It, it kind of is very similar to me a, a, as a class object for many other languages. In this case, um, I, I'm using the Motaco um, programming language, which is specific to the ICP. Um, for Ethereum, someone would use Solidity, right? Which is another language specific to the Ethereum um, network, right? So here we have an actor, um, which is literally this block um, is the, the smart contract um, right there. You're looking at a smart contract here. It's just basically code. It's a program um, over here. We have the total supply of said tokens. I can put whatever number I want in there. I, I don't even know. I just put a one and a bunch of zeros in there, but literally whatever number I put in there is the amount of tokens that I have just created, right? Let symbol, um, and in this case is of type natural number, um, let symbol um, of type text, which is just similar to strings in, in any other programming language would be the name of the token. I named this token Felipe token. Um, and just here we have more um, logic and functions um, literally to, to um, exchange messages between containers um, to make transfers of tokens back and forth and so forth. Um, and then you can just deploy these smart contracts onto a subnet or the blockchain into the main net and boom, you're live, you're ready to go. Just there's costs to cycles and all these other things that I could go into, which makes these things a little expensive, right? Because there's transfer costs and and there's costs for just running um, um, functions that, that basically change state. So... But in reality, all this stuff is just literally code. 
um, someone wrote um, and random generated numbers, right? Or a random number tied to a variable that is supposedly X amount of whatever token you create. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there, kind of give a, a um, under the hood overlook of what these contracts might look like and what they actually are, their code, their program, right? So that's what this is basically. Uh, so uh, with that being said, I'll leave you guys with a quote um, specific to uh, to the markets, right? Uh, the situation has provided a queue. This queue has given the expert access to stored information and memory, and the information provides an answer. Intuition is nothing more or nothing less than recognition. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, so yeah, basically, um, with that being said, you know, I appreciate you guys for joining me. I hope I share some valuable information with you. And if you liked what I share, please like and subscribe. I see you guys on the next one. Have a good one.